studio yes. on the couch yes. writing our new theme song for Pillow Cat for 2020. There we go. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for having me. Ben is a multi-talented musician, composer, uh, teacher, pillow cat enthusiast, uh, yes, philosopher. Wow. Every, every time we get together to work on music, we end up talking for two and a half hours. Right. Minimum. Dope. I can, <laughs> I can only quote Homer. <laughs> That's, that's never wrong to choose Homer. <laughs> Homer said the right thing. I mean, they're in season, what, 30 now? Oh, my gosh. He said the right thing for every situation in life. He he really he really has. <laughs> he he brings point. things down to my level, that's for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, man, thank you for being here. Um, we were talking before this about a Joni Mitchell record. Yes. What's the name of this record? Because I will admit right now... I love Joni Mitchell, but I'm not super fluent on her discography. I know the hits. I tend to uh, just obsess on, um, you know, uh, two, maybe three albums. I mean, you know, even with artists who I consider myself to be a diehard fan of, it's just sort of like I can, you know, there are albums that I can just listen to and over and over again, it takes me such a long time to process sure. you know it's just sort of like gosh i don't know if i can handle any more awesome much more awesomeness <laughs> from this particular artist right. or band or whatever but there's a there's a record called miles of isles okay and um what is it about this record well a lot of things um it's a live record with um with uh, Robin Ford and the LA Express, um, that's what drew me to it. But this is this was the first Joni Mitchell record that I picked up, um, and um, you know you can hear you can hear the audience, um, uh, you know, saying certain things in between songs. Um, you know, it's also a very kind of um, energetic and upbeat record and she actually had she sounded very uh uh you know just kind of particularly excited to be there it was just it it just it's a it's it's more of a feel-good um uh joni record there's a there's a song on it called real good for free um which uh as a musician, it's basically about um, it's about her um, walking down the street with her entourage after after a sh- after a show, um, and how she has six gentlemen, you know, escorting her everywhere she goes, and she gets in a limousine and and everything, and uh, and they go downtown, and she 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 hears this sound of a clarinet, yeah, and it's just this kid just playing th- th- these beautiful lines. And, um, you know, and so she, she wanted to go and, uh, you know, lay down some harmony. That's actually that, that line is, is mentioned in, I think, uh, in one of the verses. Um, but she was just too busy being, uh, you know, a rich and famous musician. Yeah. And, um, it's just you know it pulls at your heartstrings and especially as a you know as a musician you know who you know it's just like you know it's just like i'm sure you could say the same i've played i've played a lot of free shows (laughs) you know majority of them have been uh and so it's just i don't know there's just a, a that sort of spirit of graciousness um um on the record but but one of the most interesting moments on the record is um, when she's going from one instrument to another. I think she she might have been doing something like um, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, last time I saw Richard or something like that on piano. Yeah. And then she she um, picks up an acoustic guitar. Of course, you you're imagining her do this because. <laughs> 
there's an awkward silence. Then and they then left it in the record. They, but they left this awkward silence in the record. That's what's so interesting. I love. Yeah. I love when that's the case. Yeah. When the artist isn't like, I get rid of that. Yeah. There's 10 seconds of me talking like an idiot. Get right. Rid of it. it was obviously, it was obviously intentional. And to, for that to have been left in there. But there was a good, like, maybe five or six seconds of silence um, um, left in there. And then you can tell that she's tuning because she used like something like 56 different tunings or something like that. I mean, yeah. she's just, I love Joni. She's just freaking brilliant. Um, so then you hear, you hear the audience, you can feel the audience kind of start to fill the space, fill the space a little bit. And, you know, I love you, Joni. I love you too. Thank you. I'm here trying to, tuned to this like weird Lydian augmented scale for so I can do this awesome version of blue just trying to literally trying to tune the audience out so she can tune her guitar uh, there's always an element of irony yeah. going on when it when in, in situations like that but then people start Woodstock Free you bird. know yeah right right big yellow taxi yeah. and they start just like you know yelling yelling out their requests and then and then she finally says she kind of laughs, laughs and she says you know one reason that i sometimes feel like i prefer visual art being a visual artist because she was a brilliant painter as well she did a lot of her own um, album covers and that sort of thing um over um being a uh, performing artist is that there is just this final moment when your your work is complete mm -hmm. when you're a visual artist and you have this very gratifying sense of of uh, of resolve and mm -hmm. permanence but of course I'm paraphrasing but as a performing artist you know, you're always expected to um, to you know regenerate, you know, re-deliver the same work over yeah. and over and over again. That comes with a great responsibility, you know. And then she was like, you know, and it's like no one ever like looked up at Van Gogh and said, "Hey, <laughs> can you paint Starry Night again, man?" You did it 80 other days in New York, and you did it in California. Right, right. I, I saw you do it. Starry Night for an encore. Man, I saw you paint Starry Night in the Cow Palace in San Francisco. God, it was so awesome. I want that. Put I want a little that bit. future. Yeah, I do, too. Do you remember that time you painted Starry Night at the Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh... Anyway, uh, that came to me. There's a lot in that, probably yeah. a lot more than than I'm even getting from it. But I just thought, I thought I'd share that story. Absolutely. I love that, man. I love that she left it in there also. Yeah. Like that to me, of course she did. Like that's, she's always been an artist who kind of stays in the uncomfortable right exactly like her lyrics her songwriting even her bigger hits they have this element of like almost meditative you can't just casually listen you don't casually listen to Joni Mitchell like, right there's an element of like almost arrested development when you're listening to a song and I yeah. love I love that she le left that uncut I love that she let the audience have their their time and she didn't run away from that. Like that's that's right. that's the thing I love the most about that story. Um, yeah, man. It's strange, also, because we live. I mean, you and I, in in particular, like most of what I do is recorded now. 
almost everything. I yeah. Do. I'm not doing a lot of performance. Right. Whereas that was, you know, for her, it was both. It was record the record and then go, go promote that record for the next year. Yeah. Um, and 180 days of live shows or whatever ungodly schedule you had. Yeah. It's strange to have to operate in both. Like be, right. be in the moment in the studio and create a standalone piece of art and then right. go and regurgitate it to everybody across the U S if you're lucky enough to be able to. Yes. Um, and how do you, and some artists buck that trend. They don't, they don't try to recreate their record. They don't try to, they don't try to do, um, the album version of a song for a hundred days a year, but most people don't. Right. Right. Like if you even have like a, a modicum of success in the record industry, like you're out there playing those songs. That's, that's right. the gig, man. Right. <laughs> that is the gig. Yeah. And, you know, there is something to be said for, you know, I mean, it's it's nice to have another opportunity to get something right, you know, and, and that sort of thing, you know. And there is something to be said for having that particular challenge and, you know, and also uh, just like embracing the imperfections that 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 might kind of give a performance a particular type type of character sure, sure. but um but you know i could that really thinking about that moment now actually i think it speaks to me even more so than when i first heard it um because you know getting to work with with uh with you and finally getting to to uh to a place where um uh you know i can actually think of something uh literally having um a start time and a finish time right. you know right. uh a, a um a, an end that will you know allow me to continuously evolve yeah you know um, in the sense of really exploring, you know, um, new ideas all the time, pen to paper, and then, and then it's just out there. Um, you know, that's um, that's really that's really gratifying. It's the perfect drug. It is. It's yeah, the, it's the perfect creativity drug for me. Yeah, like the living in that realm of, and I'm, I'm not trying to talk for you. Um, no, no, man. Living in that realm of creation, and then, yeah. like, I don't remember even what key some of my compositions are in the day after, right? Because it wasn't in that moment, and yeah. you, you don't need. There's not a need for that. I don't. Need, right. I don't need to recall the idea again. Right. <laughs> it's there. I don't have to live in a world where I have to prepare it for an audience or prepare to perform it or ve yeah. very often. Um, and yeah, man, it's great. Oh, oh gosh. It's, great. It's, 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 it's the, it's the best. And, uh, I mean, I wish that I would have discovered this year's, you know, um, the, the true, uh, joy, you know, of, uh, um, of, of, of actually working, you know, with, um, uh, other uh, talented composers like yourself, you know, and, and, and producers like yourself. And, um, you know, I would always, I, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly terrible at, at remembering things. And really my whole experience as a musician has just been just sitting, you know, just, it's, it's always been just about storytelling. Yeah. Um, and, uh, gosh, I still struggle with, you know, um, remembering um uh repertoire uh remembering my own songs remembering yeah. <laughs> remembering jazz standards and and that sort of thing um i want to ask you about that because you uh, the reason i love working with you is that you have such a wealth of experience that i don't have like we come from different places likewise man yeah. and uh, so speaking specifically about like performing in groups and performing jazz and let's let's say we're playing standards right that's the holiday season so i imagine you've played a gig or two that are a lot of christmas standards or a lot of jazz standards that you're playing your approach to a small ensemble 
if you're going to play a gig and it's an hour and a half or whatever it is, and it's going to be a mix of standards or people calling tunes in the group, how are you mentally preparing for that? <laughs> or are you mentally preparing for that Not after, after, nearly. Done, after doing it as long as you've done? Well, it's, it's, it's nice of you to say. Uh, not probably still not enough in fact um i'm just now really starting to um you know embrace and appreciate um preparation yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you know i used to i i've i've been in lots of situations um and and really you could you could almost sum up like a pretty big chunk of my life as a musician is um is just uh um having to to come up with it on the fly yeah kind of having to kind of keep your ears really sharp and um uh you know uh literally fake it and so you make it and fake it and hope for the best and and find the Find the true art in faking it. Yeah. You know, um, you know, just it becomes a very sort of unconscious kind of like process and skills that you develop. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I, I suppose out of uh, lack of, of severe lack of energy and time, um, I, I, uh, I I oftentimes would would just you know not not prepare, you know. Um, when I first started playing solo gigs, for example, uh, just to make a little um, extra money, you know, <laughs> when I was in college in restaurants and that sort of thing. I mean, I figured out how to um, kind of almost visually disappear yeah. and almost sonically disappear and create like an atmosphere, yeah. you know, um, that, that if I could handle it delicately enough, um, um, then I could, I could, I could hide um, you know, I could hide my flaws. I could hide my my musical flaws. That's I could I could I could hide my right. uh, I could hide my my uh, my my lack of um, repertoire. I just learned how to kind of improvise my way in and and out of things, yeah. uh, for better or for worse. That's yeah. weirdly the perfect skill set for film score and for anything that has any sort of dialogue where you need your your primary focus is mood, right? Yeah, yeah. Your 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 mood and texture and support of yeah. what's happening, but not the spotlight on what's happening. Yes. That's interesting. I've kind of done the same thing. Yeah, 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 man. As a drummer for most of my musical career, you're almost always not the spotlight so yeah. it's, it's easier to get away with not having to be at the top of your game yeah not to say that i wasn't a lot of times but not having that focus be on you it's on the it's yeah. on the lead singer it's on the right. guitarist it's on whatever else yeah that's interesting yeah 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 man trying to achieve that in a solo scenario is that's a that's a task all on its own well, you know, I mean, you have to be, you can't do that on stage necessarily. Right. Although I guess you could. I would argue some people do, especially yeah. figures. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. I yeah. think I've seen Nils Fromm do that. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I'm digging this whole thing, man. Uh, um, just, I guess I, uh, I was just thinking about our history. Yeah. I don't know if we've ever really talked much about it, but I guess I, you know, from back in the 11 o'clock rock days. Yes. Um, 
what days they were. What days they were, yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'll never forget the uh, skit that you did with uh, with Brent Thompson when he was holding you captive or something like that. He held me captive for many months. <laughs> and you were so gracious and forgiving. I, I think it's one of my strong suits. <laughs> I was I was put in the trunk of a car. I was driven around a parking garage. I was duct taped to yeah. certain things. Yeah, I was marched along the square. I was put in a box at one point. Oh, I wonder if any of that footage still exists. To yeah. <laughs> Brent has a wonderful way of convincing you to do things. Oh yeah, tell me about it. He's one of the best. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. Oh gosh, yeah, gosh, yeah. yeah. He's a love that guy. Well, Visionary. Man, tell me how. So Ben Maney, the the improv focused. So let let's clarify something real fast. When you are winging it, you're winging it on top of decades of practice. Like you know your instrument better than most people know their instrument. Uh well, that's nice of you to say. Uh, I'm just speaking I've, I've for myself. Adult. Like when you're when you're going in cold, quote, you're not going in cold the same way I would be on a piano. You're going in cold with a a grab bag of foundation behind you. Yeah. Which I think is the the best thing about improv jazz is when you see somebody who knows the language, has studied the 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 art of improv and the art of being in the moment. When they are in the moment going in cold, it's a whole different thing. <laughs> it is, yeah. And you have the same com- uh, command on your um, on your instrument for sure, man. Yeah, it's. Um, I, we were talking about this earlier. When it comes to jazz, it's like you're never really like you know, um, like I don't. I still, I, I, I still don't know um, if I can. I still feel a little awkward, even considering myself uh, to be a jazz sure. musician. Um, but that's the thing about jazz is like you never. It's it evolves so quickly, yep. and it's <clears throat> all about evolution. Yep. You're expected to take it somewhere, and uh, it's you know it's challenging in a really beautiful way. And I'll probably never feel like um, you know uh, I'll I'll ever get there. But that's yeah. that's that's the that's the bug, you know. That's the that's the draw. That's the that's mm-hmm. that's that's the that's the drug. Um, Do you think? Um that same drive exists when you compose? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Like the yeah. drive and the bug being, this is in this moment, I'm doing this thing. Well, you know, I don't know if there is, you know, there. I, I, I feel like there's, a li- there's, there's very little um, of a distinction um, between improvisation and and composing yeah. you know Im- improvisation is is the is the process of starting that's all you know i mean it's it's the it's what we're doing now yeah you know um i can remember re- i recently looked at a I was watching a chick korea youtube oh gosh he's so he's He's very, by the way, he seems to be very uh, online accessible now. Really? And he's such a cool guy. He's even cooler than you would imagine him to be. He's just so down to earth. But um, but he was talking about improvisation, and he had very little to say and he basically um you know was just kind of saying that's the whole point you know it's you you're just you know you you just do what you feel inclined to do and he sat down and started playing a rumba and started to improvise over it 
And all he could do is just say, if I wanted to do this, I could do this. If I wanted to do this, I could I could do right. this. He was just like, it's a lot easier for me to um, to explain this using my instrument as an example right. than it is for me to, you know, uh, try to explain it with the very confining, you know, limitations of the of the English language. Yeah. Not that he's not. Uh, uh, an incredibly articulate person. I mean, he is. Yeah. That was, you know, but that was kind of like the whole, the the uh, the whole point. But yeah, I mean, um, I guess uh, composing for me starts off with improvisation, but then you kind of get to the point to where I guess you start refining. Yeah. You start taking like we were we were working earlier, and you were like, "Yeah, we just it's time to start taking things away." Yeah. Um, you. You 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 have you have that that moment of self critique. Yep. Where you <clears throat> stop and you 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 say, "Okay, what did I just do?" My favorite way to think about that is uh, I think it was Tom York who, who he was interviewed by Apple Music or something for his new record and they were asking him about his solo work and he he started by saying there's no such thing as a solo artist right I remember you saying that he was That's talking awesome. about he was talking about critique like he has right he has a producer who has worked with him through all of Radiohead who he brings that stuff to and and uh, the short version of this is he said <clears throat> composition when you start composing you're building these little lego houses right yeah i'm just gonna add bricks and i'm gonna build this thing and he equated it to if i build five lego houses by myself with no one else around no one else giving any input and then i show those houses to my producer who i trust and he says that one that's the one i like Mm -hmm. And then he takes the other four houses and breaks them down, puts them back in the box. And then yeah. they take that house and they start changing the things on it. Mm -hmm. And his point being, no one can truly do that to themselves. Right. Right. In his case, he, right. he was arguing that he made five houses that were equal in his mind. And the one that yeah. connected to another human being was the one that he wanted to go with. Yeah, And I love that because it tells me there's a million sounds I can make as a, as a composer, as a producer, as a musician that interest me. But the true quality of art being connecting to someone else, yes, that's the space where collaboration can be the most helpful tool. Yeah. Like when I hear what you've done, I, I see the, the piece that you just showed me. I see the evolution of you building it. Right. Like as the yeah. three minutes roll on by the end of the thing, you see what the apex is and then I can go, OK, that's not hitting me at all. But this really is or this this part right here, when you layer this right. thing and you throw the amp on it, that's the piece that that connected to me. So I can help you kind of carve things out based on where you arrived at. Right. That's my favorite thing about collaboration. It's my favorite yeah. thing about this industry is you start from an ocean of possibility yeah and that's the drug and then you mm -hmm. you build your little piece of it and you hand it to someone else and they go i see it it's right there the pearl's right there just move this dirt off and <laughs> there it is like that's that's right. the, that's the dream right right you end up in this like nice little lagoon or even a pearl sandwich <laughs> <laughs> we'll all be eating pearl oh, sandwiches by the end of this. <laughs> oh, man, you had to mention that at, 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 at this time of day. Sorry, man. Barely had any breakfast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What would Although you? Although it does sound a little. Yeah, pearl sandwich. Doesn't, yeah, does not that sound filling like back it there. <laughs> <laughs> um, thinking back to your early days whether it's in composition or learning your instrument or getting into music in general what's the advice you would give a young ben maney who's oh, just man. starting out like just one piece i know that's an overwhelming thought but just a single like hey man focus on this oh yeah gosh that's such a great question 
and um, and as a as a teacher, I feel like uh, um, karma, with its very sort of like you know mischievous sense of humor, has sent <laughs> has <laughs> has sent a few few uh, few little me's into into my into my studio. <laughs> So I, I I do grapple with this a lot, even though I don't know if I uh, have a con- very concise answer. But um, I would say the most important thing is to. I mean, it sounds it sounds cheesy and and um, you know cliche, but just you know be confident about what you feel compelled to do with your art <clears throat> and uh you know it's it's important to uh you know as Jaco Pistorius said to just play as much as as you can and with as many people as you can right. and uh, as many styles as you can you know, um, but you know, I, I feel like I, I was pretty good at, at at going along. I think that what I struggled with was, uh, you know, having those moments with just me and the piano when things would start to come out, and I felt a certain connection to things that I was doing. And uh, and I would never do anything with it, yep. and um, and it would just disappear into the, you know, into the ether, because I didn't believe enough in myself, honestly, um, and uh, as a result, in what I was doing, to think that it would ever connect with anyone and uh, and yeah. and it's sad you know and yeah. and and uh um and honestly um you know uh if if it doesn't connect with the first person that you play it for or show it to or whatever it is that does not mean it won't connect with some with 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 uh with someone and it's also just important for people to see, um, you know, how you um, are expressing yeah. who you think you are with what you're doing. Yeah. And if you continue um, to um, be a creative person, especially if you uh, continue, if you aspire to and, and decide to continue to, uh, to take, to take it on, um, professionally, that's gonna you're gonna come back around to that anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, you know you can do you can do both. You can you can um, you can learn all the repertoire and uh, you know learn all your learn all your scales all your all your theory learn all your composition chops and and that and and everything and also throughout that process during every single stage um create things you know create things and 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 play them for people yeah that uh, that's just you know it's simple but it's not at the same time but that's 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 how i feel about this is that. why you and i talk for hours because that struck a chord with me immediately that's almost exactly my experience early on was was a sense of shame or a sense of undervaluing what i created right early on mm-hmm. it's really easy to be like we're playing this talking head song and it's already a success and it's not you don't have yeah. that that internal struggle of worth because it's already proven itself worthy so if you're you're learning a song right. That's already been given the star treatment. Yeah. There's no risk there. It's not an idea to be dissected. It's already like this is a Miles Davis tune. This this is kind yeah. of, this is kinda of blue, man. Like right. just play it. Yeah. There's no fear there. 
Right, but right. If, if exactly. It's, if it's a Ben Maney tune and the band's learning it, there's a lot of layers of like self doubt and value and are these guys enjoying it? Do they want to change the chorus? Do they want to change the bridge? Like there's a lot of like self reflection that happens and when when you're an early artist, that can be overwhelming. It, you yeah. get the pressure to like be good at what you do and be one of the guys and be one of the tribe can yeah. scare you into submission a lot of times. Yeah, for sure. I remember learning these skills in my bedroom. Like yeah. if I made six dozen songs, nobody heard them. Nobody yeah. heard them. Right. I didn't think they were good. And most of them probably weren't, you know, early you know? on, but, but not having that confidence in the voice I was developing or, or yeah. the, the taste I was developing. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, and it's like someone can always, I love it when my students, um, you know, uh, improvise and, and, uh, and, and compose, you know, and, you know, you can also, uh, you know, like compare what you're doing with, with a talk, talking head song or, yeah. or, um, or, a, you know, Vince Guaraldi piece or whatever it yeah. is, you know, and, um, that was a real seasonal reference. Yeah. Vince Guaraldi. Wasn't it? <laughs> I'm Man. sure he hates that. <laughs> I did so much more than Christmas music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate you, Peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, no, he was a cool cat, man. Vince Garaldi. He did some Latin... Uh, some uh, Check out, if you Google him, uh, the early... The early days of Vince Garaldi. There's yeah. a really cool um, YouTube of him doing some Latin stuff. I think with a uh, Brazilian um, guitarist. Guitarist. Um, really, really cool stuff. Nice, but, dude. Thank but, you so much. You and I could talk. Thank you, we, man. We could talk for six hours. Well, we probably when when we, when we turn these mics uh, off, you We're, know, don't. Yeah. We we will be here until <laughs> <laughs> supper time. Um, Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, man. Um, I'll see you before holidays. And happy holidays to MIA. If I'm a if I'm a pillow, I'm a very kitty pillow. <laughs> I'm a if pillow I'm a kitty, a I'm a very pillowy kitty. <laughs> Will Wright was on here yeah. and he said that because of the stony, like the the very intense gaze of the cat, he he named it Hello Darkness. <laughs> Hello, I like that. I'm getting yeah, yeah, exactly. Very I'm not, intense. It's not purring. <laughs> It's not I purring. I don't think Pillow Cat is that's ever. Me. That's me. That's me you hear. If you hear purring, that's coming from me. He's never purred. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Thank you. <laughs>